Hello, I'm really happy to be back at CyberWorkCon and thank John for organizing this great conference again. Today I'm going to talk about large strategic web compromise campaigns that we first encountered last year. And what is interesting with this campaign is that it shows a link with a private spire firm known as Condiro. First, a quick who am I? I've been a malware researcher at ESET for a bit more than five years. Uh, my day-to-day -day job is to perform technical analysis of targeted attacks, so it includes reverse engineering, forensic, threat hunting, and of course, giving presentation from time to time. Uh, first, let me take you back to the 2017 edition of BotConf, which is a technical security conference uh, held every year in France. That year, a fellow researcher, Felix Aimé, uh, presented a tool he called Nightcrawler. Uh, he developed this custom system to discover watering holes on the internet, and the slides are available online, and you can check them. There is a link right here. So I believe most of you know what a watering hole or strategic web compromise is, but I'd like to make sure that we're all on the same page. So let's imagine that a guy named John runs a security conference and wants to order custom socks for all participants. So of course, any resemblance to real persons living or dead is purely <laughs> coincidental. <laughs> so John connects to mycustomsocks.com to order custom socks. Um, sorry. And, but a person linked to an APT group knew that John will connect to microsoftsocks.com. So what they did, they compromised the website and including a small piece of JavaScript code in it. So next time John connects to microsoftsocks.com, the small JavaScript runs in the background, will fingerprint his browser, and if the attacker thinks he's an interesting target, they will deliver him an exploit to take control first of his browser and then of his device. And what is important is that it shows that my custom sucks. It's just a vector to uh, reach the final target. So systems like Nightcrawler are relatively easy to understand. They first regularly browse a uh, predefined list of legitimate websites, high-profile websites belonging to governments, media outlets, NGOs, etc. Then it analyzes the JavaScript code, for example, every day. Uh, or malicious, uh, also analyze iframes, redirections, to check for any malicious contents, and then it applies custom heuristics to remove most, most false positives. So now, every day, you have access to a list of potentially compromised websites that you can investigate manually. After the conference, I was really inspired by, by Felix Tolk, so we decided to build our own version of Nightcrawler, and after a few lines of code, we are now able to analyze 66,000 websites every day. And it enables us to discover watering holes on the internet as soon as they are live, uh, giving us more chances to grab the final payloads. So just a few weeks after it was put into production, it started to give interesting results. So for example, in November 2018, we detected a supply chain attack on an analytics we uh, website called StatCounter, and the goal of the attack was to steal bitcoins from a cryptocurrency exchange called Get.io that was using StatCounter at that time. And a few weeks after, we found uh, another uh, watering all attacks targeting many different websites in Southeast Asia, and we were able to link this uh, attack to a APT group called Ocean Lotus. These are just a few examples. Uh, and we found few more cases in the following years. Now, let's jump to July 2020, uh, when we first noticed the strategic web compromise I'm talking about today. That day, I was reviewing suspicious JavaScript code reported by our system, and my curiosity was aroused by a piece of JavaScript code injected into the website of the Iranian embassy in Abu Dhabi. The script was loaded from a remote server called pwix.com, and it in injects two pieces of JavaScript code, one to do geolocation, and another from same domain pwix.com, whose um, um, purpose will be detailed later. And this quickly looks suspicious, and we realize that the domain pwix.com 
was no longer owned by the Matomo Web Analytics platform, but was re-registered by someone else for malicious purpose. So before continuing this presentation, I'd like to insist that, that on the fact that all information used in this research, research was available online. And in other words, we don't have telemetry from any of the compromised websites. So, so far we have one compromised website and one CNC server. So one thing we can do is to start, it to, is to start using passive DNS data. So based on the IP address of the CNC server we had, we found many more domains, uh, all impersonating URL shorteners. So they are all variation of legitimate services. Based on this new list, we found few more compromised websites. And it turns out that in 2020, there were at least five different compromised websites. So as mentioned previously, the Iranian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and many of its embassies, uh, but all these websites were hosted at subdomain of the main MFA website. Then there is a TV channel in Lebanon called Al Manar, which is affiliated with Hezbollah. Then in Germany, uh, sorry, no, in, in the UK, an online newspaper covering uh, the Middle East. So this newspaper is called the Middle East Eye. Yes, Germany, uh, medical trade fair. Uh, this one is a bit different. I will come back on this later. And finally, an Italian aerospace and defense company called Piaggio Aerospace. And at that time, in 2020, they were owned by a fund from the United Emirates, Arab Emirates. What is different from uh, the German medical threat fair is that attacker register medica-threadfair.co while the legitimate website is medica-threadfair.com. So they did not compromise the official website, but uh, yeah, they, they created a new one. And what is interesting is it was hosted at a very specific hosting provider called Server Astra that also hosts many of the other CNC servers uh, this, this threat actor is using. So the attackers simply cloned the official website and added a small piece of JavaScript code in it. So this is very similar to what they did uh, at the Iranian embassy website, but instead of compromising the, the website, they just create a fake one. So we believe attackers were unable to compromise the main website and so had to uh, clone it. Uh, unfortunately, it's not clear how visitors will, will run on this website because it did, it did not appear in the first Google results. So maybe attackers were expecting people to mistype the official website or it's also possible that it was used as part of a spear phishing campaign. So now let's do a quick technical analysis uh, of the scripts they use in 2020. And fortunately for most of you, I don't have any IDAS Pro screenshot today. So this is the main script uh, loaded from the CNC server. As you can see at the beginning, a malware developer prepared the script with a copy of uh, the jQuery browser plugin header, probably in order to avoid raising suspicion. But unfortunately for them, my mouse will work just fine, and we can scroll down. Uh, we arrive to this uh, GOIP function that uses an external library called GOGS uh, to uh, get the location of the, the visitor based on its IP address. And then we, if we scroll down again, we have this function that will get the browser name of the browser of the visitor, and a very similar function that will get the operating system of the visitor. Then we we'll learn to, to the main function. Uh, first interesting thing is that it checks if the plat platform is either Windows or Mac OS, meaning that they are not targeting people running uh, or visiting this website from smartphone, which while from most watering all attacks in the Middle East, for example, when attackers are targeting dissidents, they really want to infect smartphones, but that's not the case here. Then they check for list of browsers, it includes uh, most, most common browsers. After that, they send an HTTP request to the CNC server. The reply is decrypted using AES and an hardcoded key. And finally, the script expects the decrypted value to be a valid URL. 
And if it's, if it's the case, they create an iframe pointing to, to that resource. So uh, the, the, the what is in this URL will be loaded in the context of the visitor browser. Unfortunately, we never got a, a valid URL. Um, so we were unable to get uh, the final, uh, so the browser exploit or the final payload. And this shows attacker carefully selects uh, their targets based on fingerprinting information that the browser of the visitor sent to the CNC server. So the yellow list is stored on the attacker server. So we don't know exactly what are the, the conditions to, to get the payload, but it probably contains specific IP ranges that attackers are targeting. So I believe that attackers know uh, uh, before launching the attack the IP address of their victims. And unfortunately, in August 2020, they went dark. So in the next few months, I was bored, <laughs> and I thought that I, miss, I had missed my chance to know more about this threat actor. But fortunately, in January 2021, they were back. Yeah. <laughs> One day, I was again re reviewing a potential uh, script reported by our system. And I found this script that was injected into the website of the Ministry of Interior of Yemen. And what is interesting is, is that it loads uh, another script from a domain called visitortrack.net. And what it uh, is interesting is because it's again a domain impersonating a web analytics services as for pwix.com the year before. So based on this new CNC server, we build some kind of uh, fingerprint on characteristic of the servers. And using Shodan, we were able to, to find uh, 20 different CNC servers that were used from January to June 2021. So as mentioned previously, attackers like impersonating either URL shorteners or web analytics services, but sometimes they also impersonate from a digital marketing agency or a bootstrap CDN. And for bootstrap CDN.net, an interesting thing is it was a legitimate website a few years ago. So it was a CDN for bootstrap. So there are still legitimate websites trying to fetch uh, libraries from, from this domain while, it, while it's now in, under control of the attackers. So those websites that have nothing to do uh, with the current watering hole campaigns can actually be controlled by the attacker if they want it. So it's kind of a dangerous situation. Oh, and like all domains, there are uh, variations of uh, the real CNC so domain, so generally they just change the TLD. So in 2020, we found uh, more than 20 dif different targets. Uh, most of them are located in uh, Yemen and are either governmental websites, such as uh, Ministry of Interior or Ministry of Finance. Also, uh, media outlets, a press agency called Saba, an uh, internet service provider. In Lebanon, we see again uh, the Almana TV that were uh, compromised again. In Syria, multiple governmental websites and an ISP. And in South Africa, a uh, defense conglomerate uh, called uh, DINEL. And finally, in Saudi Arabia, an online media called the Saudi Reality. I believe this is a, a opposition media, but I'm not even sure if it's a real website or not. It has been running for, for a few years now, but it's hard to say who, who's, who's behind this, this website. So not only the targets are interesting, but also the timing of some of the compromises. Um, for example, uh, at the beginning of uh, June 2021, the Saba Press Agency felt under the control of the Southern Transitional Council, which is one of the factions in the uh, Yemeni war, and it's alleg allegedly linked to the UAE. And around 10 days after uh, this uh, uh, that they took control of, of, uh, of Saba, the, the website saba.ye was compromised and started to serve as a watering hole. Another uh, strange coincidence happened uh, with uh, the Dinel Defense Company. So this is a report from an NGO called Open Secrets that was released earlier in March this year. Um, so this report called Profiting from Misery, they specifically mentioned Dinel and its possible involvement in the war in Yemen. And guess what? 
few weeks after uh, their main website and the website of many of their subsidiaries were, uh, were compromised and started to serve as a watering hole. So there may be a simple coincidence again, but that year we believe that attackers compromise only the, one, the website of one defense company, that is Denon. So it shows attackers are reacting to, are interesting in what is going on in Yemen or, and are also reacting to real life uh, events. And I would like to mention that some of the IOCs of this uh, second campaign were mentioned on Twitter by Felix. So it allows us to, to, to make the link with what Kaspersky call Carcadon. I'm not sure exactly what are the delimitations of, of this threat actor, but it's definitely related. Now a quick technical analysis of the scripts used in the, uh, in the this second campaign. Uh, so they totally abandoned the script used in 2020, 2020 and started to use this simple script that can redirect the user to a URL provided by the CNC server. So what we do when we have a new script like that is that we create a detection for it and we quickly started to receive as much as uh, 20,000 detections per day for very similar scripts. So it was a bit suspicious. Um, turned out that they copied a script from a, a widespread adware campaign called LNKR. Um, so this adware simply uh, injects ads into compromised websites. But it has nothing to do uh, with the watering holes. It's just that they copied a script used by this adware. So why? did they use a script linked to an adware? I believe they wanted to, to blend into like, the internet mess. And for example, it could uh, lead to wrongly classify a watering hole incident to a simple adware infection. Starting from April, uh, they changed their script again and started to use this uh, commercial fingerprint service called Fingerprint GS Pro. And it allows to uh, fingerprint many different artifacts of the browser and then uh, throw the exam to the URL of their choice. Unfortunately, and as last year, we never got a valid reaction. So let's summarize the first part of this story. We uncover strategic web compromise uh, on high profile websites, mostly linked to the Middle East. Attackers like impersonating URL shorteners and web analytics. They seem to mainly target people running Windows and Mac OS, but not people uh, visiting the website from their smartphones. And they target most common web browsers. So now let's add a pinch of Candiru <laughs> on the sweater <laughs> Um Less than two weeks ago, the US Department of Commerce added two prominent Israeli spyware companies to the entity list. So it includes the infamous NSO that made the news last summer for, with their Pegasus spyware but also Candiru, another firm that is specialized in the exploitation of computers. Candiru was also the subject of this uh, article by Citizen Lab uh, this summer. And in the blog post, they mentioned uh, that Candiru has high-end capabilities, such as a browser-based zero-click vector. This probably means they provide exploits for most common web browsers. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have uh, this section called a Saudi link cluster, and researcher at Citizen Lab found malicious documents that will open Internet Explorer to a specific URL, and they mentioned that this URL redirected to another server, uh, userproof.cc, and this one is operated by Condiro. They also provide a few other domain names related to the same cluster, and they are all impersonating URL shorteners, as uh, the slide are as for some of the domain used in the uh, watering holes that I showed earlier. And finally, it is mentioned that Saudi users receive on, on Twitter links to this fake URL shortness, so it shows that the threat actor is using different uh, infection vectors. So these uh, documents, malicious documents related to this cluster were uploaded on various total from Iran, Iraq, and Syria. And they shows a decoy document, while in the background it will open Internet Explorer and prob to probably get a, a browser exploit. An interesting artifact is that the CNC server is located in the uh, metadata of the documents. 
In this example, it is in the de de description field. So later in the presentation, I will do a parallel between the watering holes and the documents. So let's summarize how they work. First, the attacker sends a spear phishing email that contains a malicious document, for example, a Word document. If the targets click on it, it will do a HTTP request to a first stage CNC server that may issue a redirection to a second stage CNC server that will deliver the exploit. And according to the Citizen Lab, the two last steps are handled directly by Condero, but we believe that the first part, including the creation of the document, is handled by uh, another threat actor, for example, the customer of Condero. So now it raises a few more questions. Who created those documents? And are they related to the watering holes? Let's go, let's go back to the network infrastructure uh, described in the first part of this presentation. First, there is very similar, uh, the topic of the domain names used for CNC server is very similar. Uh, UL shorteners and web analytic services mainly, and to my knowledge, this is not very common for APT groups targeting the Middle East. Then, passive DNS data shows interesting links. So, for example, if we start from userproof.cc, which has the domain mentioned uh, by the Citizen Lab, it resolves to this IP address, so it's linked to, to Condero. And from November to February, to November 2020 to February 2021, two other domains resolve to this same IP address, webfx.cc and engagebay.cc. And the second level domain, webfx and engagebay, were also used during the water angles. So for example, water angles, uh, attackers were using webfx.com and engagebay.app. So these are not the same domains, but there is some, some trend. However, the uh, re registration patterns are very different, and also the server configuration are different. So we believe two different threat actors are operating these two network infrastructure, but they are somehow co collaborating. Another interesting link starts from medica-threadfair.co, which, which resolves to this IP address. And this other domain, kenoratravel.com resolve to this IP address, and guess what? This is the domain used by Condiru. Uh, this is in the list uh, provided by uh, uh, Microsoft Threat Intelligence in their blog post. Uh, also, this IP address is not a shared VPS hosting, and there is uh, no other domain that resolves to, to, uh, to this IP address from mid-2020 to mid-2021. So, again, I think this is another element that indicates a collaboration between uh, two threat actors. The victimology is similar. Uh, victims are mostly in the Middle East. And finally, the watering hole server stopped responding at the end of uh, July 2021, just a few weeks after uh, the, the, the publication by, of blog posts on Condiru by Citizen Lab, Microsoft, and Google. So now let's conclude this talk with our hypothesis. First, we believe with low confidence that the creators of the documents and the creators of the strategic web compromises are the same threat group. Then we believe with medium confidence that the operator of the strategic web compromises are a customer of Condiru, meaning that they are buying spyware or exploit from that company. So this assumption led us to draw a graph that presents our vision of the infection chain. It starts with a a uh, compromised website of those spear phishing emails. Then you have a spear fingerprint script or malicious documents that will do uh, HTTP request to a first stage CNC server that may issue a redirection to a second stage CNC server that will deliver an exploit and then possibly a spyware. We believe that the last part is operated directly by, by the Condiro firm, while the first part is operated by uh, the Condiro customer. That's why for, for Condiro, we see many different uh, uh, infection vectors and many different uh, manner of compromising the victims. Now you might think it is just some vague assumption, but uh, researchers at Google Tag saw redirection from visitortrack.net, which is a domain we saw in the watering holes, to, uh, to a server operated by, by Condiro. Um, so a big thanks to, to Clément from Google Tag that uh, uh, that help us and allowed us to, to confirm that hypothesis. So this really shows that 
uh, the watering holes operator are a uh, customer of the Candiru firm. So now let's conclude this talk. We uncover strategy web compromises on high profile websites, governmental, uh, media, or ISP uh, websites, uh, most of them uh, related to the Middle East. Then the threat actor is, uh, um, caref uh, is very careful in the target selection. They, on they likely infect only a handful of the people who visit the websites. We also have uh, detail the link with Candiru, a spyware firm that sells its services to various governments. This link, this link was confirmed by researchers at Google Tags that I would like to thanks again. And hence it shows that collaboration between different companies and team is needed to better understand the threat this power, private spyware company represents. Thanks for your attention. Oh. <laughs> and maybe we have some time for questions.